Good morning. It's lovely to see everyone this morning, and it's a beautiful Sunday. So I'd like to welcome you and know that your week has been good, and this week is starting off in a wonderful way. So as we come together this morning, I wanted to introduce myself again. I'm Dr. Susan, and we are going to play and learn uh, it through our process this morning. And I wanted to ask a question before we got started on our story. Does anybody know the difference between that there's two different ways to look at a present? Well, we're going to look at those two different ways this morning. And in that process, we're going to find ways in which we can use all the gifts that that gives in both definitions of what that word means. All right, this morning we're going to do a story, and it is called, What Does It Mean to Be Present? And that's where I got the idea of the two different meanings for present. So that's the story we're going to do this morning. And I wanted to let everybody know that most of the stories that we do uh, in the series, it, I find either on Amazon or um, through um, the different bookstores that are, that are available. But most of them are from Amazon. So if you ever wanted to get one of the books in which we talk about, you can, uh, uh, if you can't remember the title of the book, you can send me an email. And if you do, then I'll answer you back and tell you where I got the book in the author and the uh, illustrator. All right, so we're going to get started with the story this morning, and I'll let you know about the author and the illustrator when we finish, this, finish the story. Okay, so we're going to get started on the story. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. It's, the title is, what, it means, what Does It Mean to Be Present? And it's by Rana, and I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but it's D-I-O-R-I-O, -I -O -I -O, Diorio, and it's illustrated by Elsa Wheeler. And their pictures are really beautiful. So we're going to go into the story. See, what does it mean to be present? Does it mean showing up in class? No. Does it mean sharing something at show and tell? No. Does it mean wrapping yourself up? No. But that's an interesting package. Being present means listening carefully when other people are speaking. We learn a lot that way. Noticing when someone needs help and taking the time to give them the help that they need. Focusing on what's happening now instead of thinking about what's next, like recess or lunch or heading home to do the afternoon and evening activities with your family. But being present means being there. Appreciating what you have, even if what someone else has seems better. And I can see the only difference in that one picture with those two girls going down the slide is one little girl has an orange and the other little girl has a butterfly. But the sweater looks exactly the same. Waiting patiently for your turn. That's another way. Treating each new experience as an opportunity. And understanding that making mistakes is how we learn and grow. That's how we make it better. Being grateful for your family and friends and telling them so. Savoring each bite of your delicious food. He repaired his rocket ship. Look at that. He used masking tape to get it ready for his next launch. Cuddling with your puppy and enjoying how soft and wiggly he feels. Relishing the warmth of the sun and the sounds of the rain. Feeling the sand between your toes, watching the rolling waves and smelling the briny seaweed. Listening to the crawling seagulls and tasting the ocean's salty spray. Oh, what a bunch of pretty shells she found. Allowing the rhythm of your breath 
in and out, in and out, to make you feel peaceful, closing your eyes and being still enough to hear your inner voice. Have you ever listened for your inner voice? We'll talk about that in a little while. And if you notice on the puppy, what's sitting on the puppy's nose? He must be very peaceful to lay that still so a butterfly could land on his nose. Being present means living in the moment. It means realizing that yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. So tell your friends what it means to be present and spread the word. When we're all present, life can be much richer, fuller, and happier. Isn't that a pretty butterfly? The end. All right. So now we're going to take a look at that idea as to what that exactly means, being present. I know that with all the different activities and everything happening today, sometimes it's pretty hard to be in the present. It makes us want to make things better so we don't have to feel the way we feel right now. And um, wishing that, all, that everyone would be healthy again so that we can get and play with our friends and, and go to school and do all those other activities that we're used to doing. But we can be in the present, which means right here and right now, all the time. But it takes practice. And that's one of the things that we're going to do today, is we're going to learn a little bit of a practice so that that's going to be easier for us to do. So but for right now, um, I was thinking of what would be really neat to have so that we could remind ourselves, maybe daily if that's what we need, or maybe once a week, but um, lots of times we have what we call practice tools that help us get to where we feel calm and comfortable, loving and accepting of ourselves and accepting of others. We have those different tools that we can use. So we're going to create a tool today. And one of the things that we're going to create it out of is things that I had at home so that I didn't go out and spend any money and I didn't have to go to the store. So, um, so one of the, what I did is I thought that it would be really fun to create a box. This box that we're going to create is called living in the moment box. So what would you put in living in the moment box to remind you that that's the best place for you to be? Especially if we're looking forward to something that we're going and doing, that we're really looking forward to, and spending all of our time doing, thinking about that, instead of thinking about what we're doing at this moment in time. So uh, being in the present is part of what that is. So the box that we're going to just I just got found one of these boxes I had in my craft storage room, and it's something I had walnuts in before, but we're going to make it into living in the moment box. It's just a little white box. If you want to make one of these, and I hope you do so that it gives you an idea of what it is like, is that it can be any size this big. It can be any size that you want, okay? And um, the, uh, I don't know what size this is, but it's probably a medium-sized box. But you can get a jar if you'd like to use a jar instead of a box. Anything that a card would fit in. Now, of course, these are the cards that I have, and that doesn't mean you have to have this size card. You can have this kind of a card. You can have a round card. It doesn't matter what you have. Or you could just have it on a folded piece of paper. It's up to you. That's the, that's the fun part of creating a box that's just for you. And it has in it what's important to you and how you find that way to get connected and to stay connected as to where you are. Okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be... Uh, I went through, the, went through the book again, and I found the different things that they talked about. And I'm going to prep that while we're, 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 before we get ready to make the box. So this is the card. It's just a little it's like business-sized card. It's a card. If you want to, you can decorate the card where you put on the words. That's okay. So I think I'll do that right now. I'm going to use this teal blue. And I have a piece of paper down here, so I'm not going to worry about getting markings. 
the uh, table. So I'm just going to, you can see it. So I'm going to kind of like do a lot like Starburst or um, a border on this, just with the pen. And I'm making it kind of squiggly. So it gives it a little bit of texture and design. So I'm going to do that. And you can do it any way you want. You can color the whole card. You can color a little bit of it. And this is just to make it interesting. It doesn't have to be um, anything specific. It's whatever you like to do. It's touching your creativity. And that's one of those things that being present helps you do. All right. So I went ahead and I decorated my card. As you can see, I put blue around it. And the first word I thought about was, was in the first part of the story, and I'm going to cut out while I'm talking, is one of the words that is important to me is be sure that I listen. When someone's talking to me or when um, uh, I have to get, gather some information, and the other listening that's important is listening to myself, to my inner to my inner voice telling, helping me make decisions and deciding what would be the best to do on different activities. Uh, I'm using double stick tape to stick on the back. You don't have to use double stick tape. You can use regular tape. All right, and this says, and this word says listening. I'm going to trim a little bit of the tape off. And then I'm going to put it in the, move this over here so you can see. I'm going to put it in the middle of the card. Listening, just like that. So there's the first one. That was the one, of the, worst, the one of the words that I felt was important to me. And the other one, which, I don't know, I, some of us think about it and some of us don't. But the other word that I thought about, actually it was a little statement, it's not a word, is awareness of others. Now in the book, it, t it told about how the little boy was helping the little girl with her butterfly. And... Um, Sometimes people need help and they're not asking. They're not willing to ask or they're afraid to ask or one of those things. But when you see a, someone that may be like your mom, she's coming home from the grocery store and she has four or five bags. And when she gets home, being aware that she's home, she's bringing groceries in from the car, ask, can I help? Or just go and take one of the bags from her. Uh, or dad when he's going gross when they, he's doing the shopping. So those are other things, just being aware of what other people are doing. And a lot of times you can see where that uh, your assistance might be really helpful and really useful. So just being aware of the other people around you. Maybe your little brother has gotten out tons and tons of toys and it's time to clean up and he's whining because he has to clean up all these toys. Maybe you can, and I'm going to do another card, maybe you can assist your brother in helping him pick up his toys. That would be being aware of others and being helpful too at the same time. So I'm just going to, just going to color the corners on this one, I think. Like I said, this doesn't have to be done each time you make a card. You can just put the word on it if that's what you choose. But just kind of making it just kind of fun like that. There we go. And putting a piece of tape on it. And I'm sorry, I'm looking down instead of looking up at you. Tape there. Sometimes I don't get it even, so I try to trim off the excess so it doesn't stick on everything else. And put that right in the middle. And this one says, aware of others. There's another word that, that I found was important to um, pay attention, pay attention to. So that's what, that's what I, the other one. Now the other one is, I'm, I'm sure this is something that we run into when we're at school. And I know adults run into this when they're at long meetings and they're wishing that we were finished and we can go and do something else that we really want to do. But it's important to, to do those things that are necessary. And meetings and school and listening and all of that is necessary. So this one says, Focusing on now. And sometimes when we don't do that, we miss things. <clears throat> and then we have to find somebody else to ask. What did they say? What was I supposed to do? So focusing on what's going on right now is really very important. So this time, I'm going to use my card. I'm going to put, the, put tape on the back of this one. And this time, I'm going to put this in first. 
and trim off my excess and put it here. So there's focusing on now. I like purple, so I'm going to add some purple swirls to this one. So there we go. So this is focusing on now. All right. I'm going to kind of use the same process for each, each of the other ones. Uh, this one is appreciation. I'm just going to kind of tell you the words and why they were important to me. I appreciate a lot of things in my life all the people in my life and all the activities and everything that I get to do. And I appreciate the opportunities to help other people, to do things for you guys. It's just, it, it adds so much, much to my life. And then the other thing <laughs> that's a fun word to play with is patience. There's two words for patience, too. Patience that's not feeling well, and also how we acquire patience for ourselves. Now, for you guys, sometimes it's patience in waiting until the teacher's finished talking before you can ask a question. Sometimes it's standing in line for maybe the volleyball or soccer or whatever activities you have at school. Or taking your turns with toys when you have siblings at home, taking turns there in being patient. And that's another one of the words. So I'm going to put that there, and I'll do more cards in a little bit. And one of the other things that they talked about in the book with the little boy and the dog is that there's lots of opportunities. And opportunities come around so that we can learn new things and we can be better at things. Like the little boy's rocket ship. You know, he thought, okay, I can go ahead and shoot off my rocket ship. And his opportunity was to learn how to make it better. And that was the next word. Was, and this is one that's kind of difficult and hard and sometimes very frustrating to do, is when we do something and it appears like we've made a mistake. And then when we make a mistake, it's what do we do with it? Do we just get mad at ourselves because we made a mistake? Or it's a mistake we need to apologize for to someone else. You did something you, weren't, you didn't mean to do. But every time we, we haven't, we've either made a mistake or something didn't get completed in the right way or whatever the situation is, it's always an opportunity to learn and it's an opportunity to grow from. It's like if you make a mistake, okay, you know, well, I don't want to do that again because I don't like to have to deal with the consequences that dealt with it. So making a mistake gives us an opportunity to think about, just to think about, what we got out of it, what we learned from it, and then ways in which we could grow. And from the picture book, you saw that what he did is that he taped up his rocket ship, and I'm sure he was going to try to launch it again. And he may have discovered a much better way in order to do it so that he doesn't, he doesn't crunch it again. And those are ways. I know my grandson, Dominic, he's nine. He loves to uh, build with Legos. And he'll build, and then he might get frustrated or upset because his building fell down or something didn't come out the way he wanted to. And one of the things he's worked on is that he doesn't get angry and, you know, throw the Legos around the room. And we look at him and say, oh, okay, now you get the opportunity. So there's that opportunity again to create it differently to figure out how it fell down and why the first time. So you get a chance to learn and to grow, or maybe that design wasn't a good design. You needed to redo it. So those are the things he's learning, learning uh, from, from mistakes that, well, he calls it a mistake, but it's not really. It's, it's discovering and recognizing that sometimes we, tr we have an idea in our head, we try it out, and something just doesn't work with it. That wasn't a mistake. It just means we get to work more on it to see how much different and better we can make it. And then the other one, of the uh, words that I thought was important in the book was being grateful. Sometimes it's okay and grateful to make th that you, got, you had that mistake and look what you learned. You have so much gratitude because of the fact that you did. So this way, and then, uh, so being grateful for the opportunities that we have, the things we learn from them, that uh, we can make things better for ourselves and for others. Now, the next one 
that I thought was really important was gratitude. Gratitude for our family and for our friends and for all the things that we have, that we're healthy and we have a safe place to live and those things. We're very grateful for that. But this one is gratitude for your family and friends. So there we have that one. And then the other one that I thought of that was kind of meant a lot to me is nature. I love nature. I love trees and, and flowers and, and um, the ocean. I love the ocean, the smell of the ocean. And when you go into the mountains, the beautiful things that you see in the mountains, the trees and the animals and all of that, it's just so pretty. And it's so, it's such, to me, it's such a beautiful, peaceful place to be. Even that the ocean, just sitting in the, by this, on the sand and listening to the waves, that's such a pretty sound to me. Other people think it's just a loud roar, but I think it's a very pretty sound. But again, that's my opinion and my feelings about it. So nature was another thing. And now that I've sprinkled paper all over the place, uh, I'm going to take some things to go in my box. And we're going to decorate, we're going to write the things on the box. But I'm going to tidy up my spot here just a second. But those are more cards that I'm going to make. And this is for my box. So I'm hoping you take some ideas and think, think about some things. And the practice that we're going to be doing it's called a peaceful practice. And that was one of the things they said in the book. You know, they were, the dog was laying on there and his, had all his paws up. He was being peaceful. And the butterfly landed on his nose. I wonder if we could lay outside on the grass and lay still long enough for a butterfly to land on your nose. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? But anyway, the peaceful practice is, and we're going to try it right now. So I hope you try it with me, is I'm going to be standing, but you can sit and uh, get comfortable, or if you want to lay down like the little boy and the little girl did in the book, and if your dog is with you, maybe you can talk your dog into it, but we'll see about that. But I'm making a card that reminds me to, to do the practice. So just sit quiet for just a minute, and I want you to, if you'll do it with me, take a deep breath. Deep breath in, hold it for just a second, and let it out. Do it once. Twice, and the third time. And just release your breath slowly. And if that puts you in a calm and peaceful place, good for you. If, you, if you're still jittery or are overexcited or need to relax, this is a good way to do it. So this is a practice. This is a, a what you call a kind of a meditation practice. And you just recognize your breathing. You breathe in and breathe out and just think about your breathing because most of the time we don't. We just do it. But if you think about it, it helps relax all the muscles in your body and all that stuff and gives you a calm sense of feeling. So that's a practice. So I'm going to make a card for myself to go inside my box to remind me to practice this. It's a very simple, simple little practice and you can do it anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. I know you're not all old enough to drive a car, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, anyway, um, now we can do some decorating our box. As you can see, mine says walnut, walnut halves. So I kind of want to cover that up. So I've got this um, pretty paper, and I'm, I'm one that likes to make fancy little thingies, border edges and stuff. So I'm going to do that with this piece of paper. I already measured it to make sure it was going to fit on my box so I can cover up the words walnut because I don't want a walnut anymore. And it's all about recycling. So I'm recycling the box to do something different. Okay? So I'm going to do that so it fits just like that. See how that works? And you can use any kind of paper. You can color on your box if you want to, depending on your box. Or if it's a jar, you can use stickers. We did that a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to take, um, take this and I'm going to put my tape on it, like that, and like this. And you know what would be a fun thing? While you're actually doing this and creating your box, thinking about your breathing. That might be a nice practice to do. Think about your breathing. Okay, so there we go. You see, the, I covered up the walnut part. And then I also, on my uh, computer, I went ahead and I typed this up. And you can have Mom do this for you, or if you can do it yourself, that would be great is to take your um, 
uh, title of your box, and if you want it to be different than living, um, living in the moment box, it doesn't have to be the same one that I did. That's all up to you. And uh, take that, the title, which is what I did, because I'll put this on my, on my uh, desk so that I see it. And the practice would be that in the morning or the afternoon or even in the evening before you're ready to go to bed, just pull out one. Pull out one of the cards and think about what the card said. And maybe, maybe think about what you did during the day that that card would relate to. It's like, how many times today did I have to be practice patience? Um, how many times today did I have an opportunity to learn something new? And then think about that and put that into your mind and think, well, wow, that was really cool. And be grateful for the fact that you had the opportunity to do that today. Sometimes our days just go, and we don't even think about that. All right, so there's my uh, living in the moment box, the top, or the front panel, so I know what's, what the box is. And then I really like the little statement that they made at the end of the story that said, yesterday is history, which is very true. Tomorrow, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so tomorrow's a mystery. And we get to see what that's going to look like tomorrow when it gets here. And then today is a gift. We get the gift of being present, of being in the now. And that is why they call it present, being present. And it's a gift to yourself to be and to do all the different things that we talked about for your life. Okay, now I'm going to make a top, cover for the top, because I'm going to make it fancy. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make fancy edges. But again, you can do it any way you want. It doesn't have to be colored. It, you know, just whatever you'd like to do. Use stickers. Uh, the other thing, too, is that you can go through magazines and you can find words, like all the words that we talked about. You might be able to find those or type them in the computer like I did. And then maybe you can tape those words on the outside of the box. That would be kind of a cool way to do it. So I'm going to tape this down on the front of the box and just like that and because I liked the um, see there there we go I like the saying I love this yesterday is history tomorrow is a mystery today is a gift and that's why we call it the present and I'm gonna tape that because I like it you can tape anything you want on your box because that's yours so I'm gonna tape that there at the bottom the other thing I liked about the book, we saw it several times if you looked at the pages as it went through, and we saw it on the puppy's nose, a butterfly. So I found a butterfly that I liked on the computer, and I made, I made two different sizes because I wasn't sure which was going to fit. So this one kind of is a little big, so I'll probably cut this one down and, and dark color it, and then tape it to this right here. So now we get to that place. Now that we've decided on what words we like and we're making some cards. So I'm going to take my three cards and I'm going to put those in the box. The other thing that I'm going to put in the box because it reminds me of nature. It was, it was a seashell and I wrote nature on the inside. See where that is? In my hand. It says nature. So I'm going to put that in the box because that reminds me of nature. And the other thing is I love flowers. So I've got, we've had these stones before. So I took the flower stone and putting that in the box. And that's, to me, when I pick that stone up, it's going to remind me of the beauty, the beautiful scents and everything that I get from roses and daisies and all those different kinds of flowers and lavender and those things. And then appreciative of the weather that we have. Now we have some nice weather. So there's, that's about weather. And we talked about the mountains. There's the mountains. So I'm going to put that in there. That all represents nature. But that always represents nature and life and everything that's happening and going on at one time. So there's a tree. And a tree's roots go way, way down into the earth. And they connect and root. Trees grow very, very tall. Some don't, but there are many that are very tall. And they have strength. And that's the other thing it reminds me of, is being strong. And uh, so there, there's the other words. I'm not going to get those on cards before we're finished here. So there's my box. So there's, there's, I've got everything on the inside. Can you, I think you can see that. I hope so. 
and there's my box that tells me what it is. And then I have this, and then I'll finish my butterfly later and glue it to the top of the box so it looks like that. And then sometimes, if you keep it in mind, and you make this a practice, doesn't have to be every day, maybe once a week, that, and you reach in and you take something out and you read it and think about it again, as, we, as I told you just a few minutes ago. So that's another way to be present, to be where you are at that moment in time and be aware of what's around you and who's around you and show gratitude and appreciation. And I'm very grateful that you are here and I hope you enjoyed doing the um, living, living the moment box and creating one for yourself. And also, if you're interested in purchasing the book, you can get it on Amazon. The books are wonderful. And they're a great reminder, too, to be able to do things. So you guys have a wonderful week and a great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. So take care. <laughs>